Welcome to this video from Learn Electrics. In this video, we will look at some of the various ways of extending socket circuits, and we will discuss the basic principles of how to achieve this in a correct and safe manner. Typical questions that we are asked will include, how do we extend socket circuits, and is there a right and wrong way? Can I spur off the ring or even off the circuit breaker? Can I actually break into the ring and make it longer? And what is the difference between a ring circuit and a radial circuit? Let's look at a very basic drawing. At the top is a radial circuit. The cables simply go from the circuit breaker or MCB and visit each socket in turn. At the last socket, the cable stops. One cable supplies current to the whole circuit. The cable for a ring circuit, shown below it, is arranged so that the cable returns to the MCB and therefore forms a ring. We say that there are two current paths in a ring circuit. 2.5mm twin earth cable is typical for many socket circuits and the relevant fuse or MCB sizes are shown for each type of circuit. If we were to look at regulation 433.1.204 we would read that a ring circuit may be protected by a 30 amp or 32 amp protective device. That the line and neutral copper conductors shall be at least 2.5 millimeters cross sectional area. And that IZ, the current carrying capacity of the conductors, must be at least 20 amps. The peculiar thing with the ring circuit is that 2.5mm copper cable will only carry 27 amps under ideal conditions before it begins to overheat. Yet here we are trying to protect it with a 32 amp breaker. This is because current sharing between the two cables means that less than 27 amps will flow along each leg even at full load. Not exactly half each, not exactly 16 amps each at full load, but more like one-third and two-thirds. Therefore, the regulations state that the connectors and accessories in 32 amp ring circuits must be capable of carrying at least 20 amps of current. So, how do we extend a ring circuit? Here are some common methods. Let's begin with a very basic ring circuit. A 32 amp breaker, Two wires leave the breaker and travel around the room or rooms. We are using 2.5mm twin and earth in our examples, and this has a maximum current rating of 27 amps in ideal conditions. Because it is a ring, current can flow around both legs of the circuit. Depending on how the circuit is loaded, we will often find that a little more current flows along one leg than the other. It will rarely be an exact 50-50 split, as we said before, but don't worry about that. This picture shows the sockets or points on the ring. In all the drawings that follow, the white sockets are the existing sockets. The red sockets are existing sockets that are being attached to. And the blue sockets, etc. are the new or additional accessories. The regulations allow us to add one accessory to each accessory on the ring. So, in our case, we can add one socket to every socket that is on the ring. We can add a double socket or a single socket, it does not matter, but it must be only one piece of plastic, one moulding. We cannot add two single sockets and say that that is the same as a double socket. It doesn't work like that. One double socket is one accessory. Two single sockets are two accessories. If we want two accessories, two double sockets in this case, then we must do this through a 13 amp fused spur or fused connection unit as it is properly called. Now we can add as many accessories as we like downstream of the FCU and reduce the cable size to 1.5 millimeters if we wish, as we cannot now exceed 13 amps in that leg. It is also possible to split the ring. 
If two suitable sockets can be found with good access to the cables, then we can break into the ring at that point and install a new part to the ring, all in 2.5mm twin and earth cable. In an ideal world, we would remove the old cable that previously connected the two red sockets. Also, be aware of the new circuit length. We should avoid adding cable that is so long that it causes the maximum permitted ZS to be exceeded. And we will show you this towards the end of this video. Or we can just choose one socket at which to break into the ring. Space inside the socket is going to be a problem, so it is often the case that the customer loses this socket and they will use it as a junction box for the ring extension. We will simply replace the sockets with a blanking plate. Again, we are going to extend the cables in 2.5mm twin and earth. What we are doing is rerouting the circuit out of the wall box, around the newly extended circuit and back into the same wall box where it continues its journey. This is an expanded view of the wall box from the previous slide. The existing ring is broken and then, using 20 amp or greater connectors, we have attached the new wiring out of the box, around the wires and back into the box to the second connector where it now becomes the old ring circuit again. And yet another method of extending a ring circuit. It is permissible to have a spur at the circuit breaker. This spur will use 2.5mm twin and earth cable and is undersized for the breaker size. We must therefore install a 13 amp fused connection unit before any sockets on this spur. And then, from the FCU, the fused spur, we can have whatever number of sockets we wish and they can be wired in 1.5mm twin and earth cable if we so desire. Now, we can look at adding to a radial circuit and as you will see, they can be so much easier. Let's start with an easy example of a radial circuit. One wire leaves the consumer unit, visits each socket and then stops. All the wiring is in 2.5mm twin and earth and the circuit breaker is rated at 20 amps which, for safety, is quite correctly lower than the cable rating. Because the cable in our example would take 27 amps and the fuse is at 20 amps, we can never overload the cable. The breaker will trip first. This means that we can add any number of sockets in any pattern to this radial circuit. All we need to do is to make sure that all the cables are 2.5mm in size. We could, if we wished, take a second radial circuit directly from the circuit breaker and again there would be no limitations on the number of sockets or the order in which they are connected. The only requirement would be that for the 20 amp type B breaker shown, all cables should be 2.5mm and the maximum measured ZS should not exceed 1.75 ohms at any point. Another possibility is to convert an existing ring circuit into a radial circuit and downsizing the circuit breaker to 20 amps. This is shown here. Our previous ring circuit has been refused and the new sockets are wired in 2.5mm twin and earth. Notice that the top right cable in this drawing is still connected as a ring. Electrically, this makes little difference to this radial circuit and the resizing of the fuse means that a higher permitted ZS is allowed. But many electricians may decide to remove this link, if accessible, as indicated, to make it into a proper radial circuit. It is extremely useful, essential really, to know by just how much a circuit can be extended before starting the work. We should not simply hope and pray that things will be okay, that the ZS will be low enough and leave everything to chance. It would be nice to have a method whereby we can determine just how much extra cable we can add. If we need to add 10 meters and the calculation tells us that we can go to 15 meters, then happy days. But if the numbers tell us we cannot exceed 5 meters when we need 10 meters, isn't it better to know that before we start to knock holes in walls? This little table 
will show you how much extra impedance or resistance a length of cable will add to a circuit's measured ZS. It is all based on 2.5mm twin earth cable and the table should be self-explanatory. And do notice that there are different values for ring and radial circuits. These values will need to be added to the existing ZS. In this first example we have a 32 amp BSEN60898 type B circuit breaker protecting a ring circuit. The ZSM or maximum permitted measured value is 1.09 ohms. If the actual ZS is measured at 0.99 ohms then 1.09 minus 0.99 gives us 0.1 ohms maximum for the extra cable. Looking at the chart it tells us that 0.05 ohms is 10 meters of 2.5 millimeter twin earth cable for a ring circuit. 2 times 0.05 is 0.1, so 2 times 10 meters is 20 meters. Therefore, the maximum length of extra cable cannot exceed 20 meters, otherwise, the maximum ZS will be exceeded. Know what ZS you have and what the maximum extra length of cable can be before starting the job. In this next example, we have a 20 amp. BSEN60898 Type B circuit breaker in a radial circuit. The ZSM or maximum permitted measured value is 1.75 ohms this time. If the current ZS is measured at 1.25 ohms then 1.75 minus 1.25 is 0 0.5 ohms maximum for the extra cable. Looking at the chart, 0 0.1 ohms is 5 meters of 2.5 millimeter twin earth cable for a radial circuit. Now, multiplying these up, 5 times 0 0.1 ohms equals 0 0.5 ohms, so 5 times 5 meters is 25 meters. This time, the maximum length of extra cable cannot exceed 25 meters, otherwise, the maximum ZS will be exceeded. And we should not intentionally exceed the maximum permitted ZS. So, in summary, take the time to understand the differences between a radial circuit and a ring circuit. A ring circuit needs special consideration because often the circuit breaker rating exceeds the maximum cable rating, which would normally be an undesirable situation. Decide on the length of the extra circuit before dismantling. You may need to choose another route, another solution. There are several installation methods available and some have been shown here. Measure the existing ZS and then calculate the maximum extra length of cable so that you do not exceed the ZS maximum values. And don't forget there may also be the option of adding a complete new circuit and a separate breaker. And there we are. We hope that you've enjoyed this video, that you found it useful and added some more knowledge to your mental toolbox. Please work safely. Remember that electricity is dangerous and we should always lock off and safely isolate circuits before starting work. We will also leave some links in the description to this video to some other videos that are related to this video's topic. Thank you for watching this video. It is very much appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. Here are some tips on getting even more information and help out of learnelectrics.com. At your web browser enter learnelectrics.com into the search bar. Select learnelectrics.com from the choices offered and the website as shown will open up for you. You now have a couple of choices. You can search for a help item or any video by entering a keyword into the search bar on the right. Click on return and all the help files and videos with that word in the title will be listed for you. They will be shown with a short description. Click on continue reading for more information. Each video listed will have a link shown that will take you directly to that exact YouTube video. Or 
you can browse through a list of all the available items and videos. To do this, click on the LE logo on the top left of the home page and all of our items and videos will be shown. There will be 10 items shown on each page and at the bottom of each page is a page selector, page 2, page 3, 4, etc. that will bring up the next 10 items or videos in the list. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. Once again, thanks for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.